Vivaldi browser review. Is it any good? Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're diving into the world of web browsing to explore the latest updates and features of the Vivaldi browser and how it's still holding up in the present year. So let's get into it. Now, Vivaldi Browser is a browser that primarily uses DuckDuckGo as your browsing engine, and you can use a different browsing engine. So if you want to go to Google, you can also do that on the Vivaldi Browser. Now, the Vivaldi Browser also has multiple different workspaces that you can build. You're going to find that the standard layout on Vivaldi is slightly different than what you would normally see on a basic browser. So you have search options on the top, you have your account option, then over here on the left toolbar, you have multiple different options. So you have web paneling, Wikipedia's, Vivaldi, as well as other applications. So if you go on ahead and take a look at some of the other applications, these include the explore features where you can actually take a look at their platform, which is the Vivaldi social platform. It's pretty similar to Twitter. And then you also have your windows where you can see all of your windows, as well as translation features, notes, history, downloads, reading lists, and your basic bookmarks. So it has a bunch of different things added, but these are features that you can probably find on another browser. What exactly sets Vivaldi apart from all the other browsers? Well, first things first, for those who are new here, let's introduce Vivaldi. It's developed by a team that includes a former CEO of Opera. This browser has always stood out for its customization options and user-centric features. So keep in mind that this has been built more so for the heavy user that has multiple different use cases and has a very, very high workload. Now, Vivaldi is super customizable. You guys can see this is like a basic workspace. Then on the bottom, you also have break options where you can take a break. You also have syncing options and you can click on settings over here. Once you click on settings, you can customize the appearance. You can choose to turn on animation, status bars, as well as edit the theme. So you can change the color themes. You also have multiple different theme scheduling. So you can schedule a certain theme to appear at a certain time. You also have start page preferences that you can set as well. Now, navigating through different websites is pretty easy on Vivaldi. Now, navigating through multiple different websites is pretty easy on Vivaldi. However, there is a burning question. In terms of speed and performance, it's important to note that Vivaldi is consistent because a lot of people look for a super fast browser. They're looking for something that can load up instantaneously. However, if one page is loading up instantaneously, you need to keep in mind whether or not if this kind of speed could be maintained over all of your pages. So as you guys can see, Vivaldi is very quick and very effective, even without any catch within this particular browser. This browser was completely empty. It previously did not have any catch whatsoever so still it is loading up items at a very high speed so even though no data is present in the ram it's still able to load up pages very fast now from what we're seeing vivaldi has made strides in optimizing its speed and ensuring a smoother browsing experience however your mileage may vary depending on your device and your network connections so the speed that you're seeing over here with me might not be the speed that you have in execution the reason being that your connection your internet speed and device speed might be different now it's great to see that Vivaldi is also taking user privacy very seriously. The addition of multiple different tools makes it a strong contender for those who prioritize online security. So they have multiple different features such as built-in ad and tracker blocking options and these enhanced security features can help you in making sure no other website is tracking you. So if you go into settings go into privacy and security, you're going to find multiple different types of privacy and security settings on the top. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, you have blocking levels. So you can block trackers and then you can choose to block trackers as well as ads. And these enhanced security features can end up saving you a lot of time and effort that you would usually have to put later on when you're using your standard browsers and they have all of your data. And in the current world, data is what sells. So having a lot of data on you is going to make you prone to more marketing and it's going to end up making you a 
for their consumer without having you realize that it all came from your browser. So that is why using a ad blocker or a tracking blocker can be super helpful in making sure that your data is secure, your searches are secure as well. Now, even though these features are amazing on paper, user experience is what really defines a particular tool. So what exactly is going to be your user experience? Well, it is a different world when you're using Vivaldi because it's pretty customizable. You can tweak almost everything from tab positioning to browser themes. You can really tweak any of it. So if you don't like them on the top, you can move them to the left. If you don't like them on the left, you can move them to the right. You can move them to the bottom. Then let's say you have your top handling. If I want to close a tab on double click, or if I want to, you know, focus the page content in a new tab, then you have your active tab minimum widths that you want to set. You also have progress bars as well as two level or tab stacking, which I maybe want it to be accordion or two level or compact. So all of these visual features are going to be super utilitarian as well. You can build your own hotkeys. You can go into quick commands over here and from here you can build your own hotkeys. So let's say I want to add something to close tabs or maybe open tabs over here. You can, you know, build your own hotkey and you also have quick command options. So keep last typed value, open notes and notes manager. Then you have a command chain as well. So you have a command chain that is the command parameter and to close all other tabs or manage all other profiles, depending on whichever command chain you want. Then you can go into your keyboard section and you have your hotkey. So let's say I want to mail someone so I can build a hotkey called. So I can build a hotkey, maybe command C or command V, you know, what, whatever you want. So in this way, you can build your own shortcuts in Vivaldi as well. So if you're using Vivaldi, it's like using a canvas. You can really paint it on its own. You can go on ahead and choose your own startup structure. You can choose to build your own privacy and security features where you have a level of control over every element that is incorporated into Vivaldi. Plus, you also have smooth scrolling options that can help you in the visual appeal, as well as access to all kinds of websites without having to go through the big data companies because everyone knows that all of your big data companies end up selling your data that's why you get the same kinds of ads and it's super targeted when you are using a pre-existing big data company so using vivaldi can be a amazing fresh touch to be able to access the internet use it effectively customize your personal user experience as well as not have those kinds of targeted advertisements being shown to you all the time so i hope you guys found this video helpful and what is the final verdict? Is Vivaldi good in the present year? Well, it's clear that Vivaldi continues to stand out with its customization, privacy features, and user-centric approach, so I definitely do recommend using Vivaldi in the present year. Ultimately, whether Vivaldi is good for you is going to depend on your personal preferences and make sure to give it a try. And if you found it helpful, make sure to leave your thoughts and comments down below. Also, if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video. And for more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will catch you guys in the next video.